Okay, I'm back from Sydney. What I want to do is get this, this all this rear end assembly back together. I've got everything I need. I've bought what I need in Sydney. I noticed this has gone a little bit rusty, so I'll give that a sand and put some oil on it just so it protects it while I'm working here. But the actual first thing I want to do is get the diff center back in here. So what I'm going to have to do is make this gasket. So it's right now I'm going to make that gasket first. Well, first I'm going to sand that and put oil on it. And then I'm going to make this gasket. One of these things here was destroyed, so I'm going to come up with one. It'll be in one of these tins somewhere. There they are there. One of them is destroyed. I'll just dig it That's out. It there. Like someone tried to get it off with a chisel. I'm not putting that back on it. So I've got to fix that somehow or make a new one. Buy a new one if I could, but... Well, I cleaned them up on the wire wheel and sanded them. They'll just get covered in oil, that. These here, because they sat for a few, few weeks while I was away, they've rusted a bit, so I've done the same here. But that section there, you see that if you look under the car, and it's just bare metal, so I'm going to paint that silver. I'm going to do that right now. I'll tape this off and just paint that section silver. Let them dry. Is that that bit you see? And it goes a bit ugly. You know, it's in between these bits over here. So I just decided to paint that bit. I've just got to make this gasket now. They're ready to go. But what I'm going to do is I found this. I'm looking for something round. So that just fits in there perfectly. So that's going to be my inner diameter. I'm just going to cut it at that size. And then I'll just add a, whatever that is to it and cut that out. Then I've just got to stamp out the holes. That's my plan. We'll see how it works. This gasket material, that's 0.8 of a mil. It's just what I need. It's, it's a 1,000 mil long. It's 500 wide. So I've got to make two of these. Now I've got plenty of room and in the, in the corner here I'm going to make that centre one for the diff. So I'll trace around that and then I'll measure out 17 mil, right around, trim it off and now I've just got to punch in the holes. Well there's that part of it done. If you ever want to cut out gaskets? These things are great. These are awesome. These are um, Milwaukee snips. They're bloody great. you got a left and right hand pair, whatever, but yeah. So now I've just run a pen around under here. I'm just going to cut that. Throw that on. That's done. I'm going to put a bit of that stuff around there. I'm going to put the gasket on top of that. And I think I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on the other surface. I'm not going to put that on both sides in case you want to pull it apart. It's a lot easier. It's not gl totally glued there. Right, there's our gasket made. It'll take longer than you think to make shit like that. Just loaded this surface up with a bit of grease. And like I've glued the gasket on the other side. If you ever want to pull this out. That's your friend. Well, there's that all together. I buffed all these nuts and everything, and I've whacked a bit of clear on them just so they stay look good looking. Same with up around here, and I've oiled all this. So that's enough for today. I've got other stuff to do. I've got to repair that um, bung plug. One's okay, but the other one's definitely knackered. So I've got to fix, make a better one. So. Anyway, it's getting there. That's that stage of it done. I'll just pop the axles in and then start assembling the sides. I just want to get it off the bench because I want to use this bench to build the engine. You get all the crap off it so it's just up easy. You don't have to bend over. Anyway, that's that for now. I'm just going to clean these up. I'll just file the edges on that and make it look better. I'll put that on, just flick a bit of silver paint on it for now. This thing here, I've got to try and do something with that. It's buggered. But I'm just going to make it so we can use it until we get another one. But what I'm just going to do, these things here, you can really use them, you just feed them up. Give it a quick anneal, that softens it. That's good to go. I don't really want to spend too much time on this, it is pretty buggered. The thread's good on it, so I can use that and that. So what I'm going to do is get this big nut here. I'm going to just weld that there like that and I'll trim it up a bit and that's just what we're going to use till we get a new one. Alright, here's this thing. I'm just going to go with that until I get a new one. I don't know, a little bit low there, that's nothing. It's just temporary. But I don't know what's going on. Like I'm finding very hard to see what I'm doing when I'm welding. 
because I wear these plus three glasses, all I can see is a bright, big bright light lately. It's just, I just cannot see what I'm doing. It's so annoying. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and buy a 25 by 125 tap, and I just want to clean that thread before I use that, because I don't want to screw that in there, because it's got a couple of little bits of whirling splatter and shit in the thread. Like, I don't want to stuff the thread up on the housing. So I'll just go and buy myself a, a die, 25 by 125, uh, by 1.5, and I can even, that'll last for years. But when we find one, we'll get one. But like I said, I don't want to stuff that thread. Now, I've got to start putting this stuff back together. I can't exactly remember how it goes. I've got an idea. But I'll just go up and have a bit of a look, see what I can find. I've got a parts exploded view of this thing, and I'll go and see what's going on. So I've also sanded that with um, 800, and I've annealed it. So you can do that with copper as well. You don't have to replace those, just heat them up. Softens them, reuse them. Well, I thought I filmed all that, it just ends and everything, but apparently not. But yeah, that you pump that with grease, it spins down and then it locks in. And these you just tap down. I just use a rubber mallet. And then you just do the same with that, and chop it down about that far, because this part here goes over that and that just slides on there. So it's sort of ready to go on those two bits. Anyway, I thought I filmed it, but I didn't. Well, there's them things on. They spin up and down. When, if you're ever doing this, maybe you'd put the O-rings in there. There's one on each side. They go up in there. Put the O-ring on, then the clip. So the clip goes on next, then that oil seal. Yeah, I want to mark out this gasket. I've got to make two of these. And I want to save some of this material in the centre here to make other stuff. So I'll put one there and I'll put another one down there and I'll still have a lot of this other left over. I've got that quite cheap off eBay, 45 bucks they delivered it. So I'll just draw around that with a pencil, a pen, mark it all the holes and get stamping. There's that one marked out. I'll just put a little L here because that's where the um, guide dowels go. There's one there and there's one there so it's slightly larger. But these are all the same size except for that. And then I'll put the next one there. We've still got plenty of this stuff left over to make other stuff, which I do have to make a few. And I want to try and save some of this in the middle here. Yeah, I can make a couple of gaskets out of that. I've just gone over these with a transfer punch. It tells me where the center is of these, these holes. They're M10, these larger ones, there is a M8. So when I use the punch, it's got a little centering piece. And so it just, it'll give me exactly where the hole is. I've just got to figure out where this big hole is. That's for where the shock mounts. What I used to, going to be using, I've got this big one, it's almost that size, it's very close, that's M8, that's M10. It's well worn, but still very sharp, it'll cut through that like butter. That's for leather that, but it's easy, it does this easy. We've got two, the other two gaskets, all done. I'll just put them on, put something on them, keep them flat. I've already had them on, they both fit. Uh, that's great. I'm just about to put this clip back on here and start assembling the rest of this rear assembly. But first, what I want to do is sandblast this and this. I'll punch that seal out. I've got new ones in Sydney. This is the left side. I've, I've marked a little L here. You can put it on either way, but your handbrake bracket. If you put it on the wrong side, you're going to pull back off and swap it. So I don't want to yeah, do so that. Blast it. I'll just give them prime and paint them black. Oh, there's that stuff all painted. Took a fair bit of that grit, yeah, like more than a bag, more than 25 kilos. If I've, I've got to capture, recapture this stuff. I normally set it up with the big um, cardboard and blow it into that, so then I could sweep it back up. But I just didn't have time today. Too much crap I've got to move. I've got the chassis sitting on my big cardboard. Anyway, I've got these um, O-rings in here. I'm going to put this clip on. See how that goes. Oh, it is this weird clip. I've got that one assembled. Just so I really do know how it goes back together. You can put this piece in wrong if you're not careful. But you'll be right. But this thrust washer, this one's fine, but when I pull it apart, I discovered this one was a bit bent. So I'm just gonna fix it cold. I'll flip that over, other side's flatter. I'm just gonna hit that down and straighten this cold. I was gonna heat it up. Be 
probably falling off that. And that's pretty well straight. You ever have to put that on, you put the thrust washer in first. And you, there's a little slot that slots in and then it pushes up in that just locks in there like that. I've put some engine assembly lube on this. Now that that's chamfered side goes in that way. And that just pushes in. I'm going to need a couple of hands to do this. It's pretty tricky. Where's that clip in? It's pretty basic really. And now this little seal's a special seal. I'm just reusing the old one. There's nothing wrong with it. So basically this has diff oil in it, and so it's the centre. But you don't want it just transferring under high G, under load, so that's why they have all these seals and stuff. It doesn't really matter if a little bit leaks here or there, as far as I can see, as long as you stop most of it. Anyway, now we've just got to do the other Painted side. All this stuff here, these have all been buffed up and painted with clear. Yeah, you know, they might get chipped a little bit, but I'm going to hit them with some inox anyway. This stuff's all painted. I painted them with this fake chrome stuff. That'll do. Like I said, this car's going to be getting driven. It doesn't, you know, it's going to be good, but it's not going to be in a concourse car. And it's not my car. I'm doing it the way I'm, I can do it with what we've got. So anyway, that's ready to all to go together. I've just got, I've decided I'm going to put the new bearings on it. I'll get them tomorrow. And this will be all back together tomorrow and off this bench. Okay, man, to put the rest of this together. Basically, what you do is you load this up. You put the your sprocket there, sprocket there, chain, and then you just put it on there. Probably drop the axle in there and just push it in. But I've bought new bearings. I'm just going to take the seals out of it. That one goes in there. That goes on there. You can put the chain on. And then th that shaft, this shaft here, <clears throat> load that up with bearings. That goes in there. Uh, I'll just about to do that now. I'll push this bearing onto this sprocket first. Right, I'll press that bearing on there. That's gone in. I just heated that housing up and that bearing just dropped straight in. You didn't have to press it or nothing. So we've got to make sure you put the chain on because you won't get it on otherwise. So basically what I've done now, I've loaded that up. So if that goes in there. Right, I've got that together. I'm just going to put this um, gasket goo around here and put the gasket on and then grease that other side flick this one on and I'll more film the other side it just took me a bit to figure everything out there's there's all sorts of stuff that can go wrong you've got to make sure you get all the seals you've got to put your seals in the right spot because they, both these seals even though they're different size the centers are different size so if you put that wrong seal in there you've got to pull it all back apart and that you know, didn't want to do that so it's all together correctly I'm just going to flick this side together and I'll more film the other side Here's this side when that tightens up it tightens the chain and you just adjust it from the inside I've got grease on this side doesn't need it up there the oil only seals to here I've got this on it's glued I've put this number four Phillips head there and it's got that washer that you've got to have it's also going to help me guide the thing in well, there's that side all back together. You've got the shock bush in. Uh, that flicks up and down like that. But that's all done. I've just got to assemble the brakes. Put oil in it. I wasn't sure if you could get that spring. I didn't think you could get that spring off, but... Get it, you know, well, I thought you had to put that on before the plate, but I couldn't see any difference. I can actually get it on, so... I don't know why I had trouble getting it off. But I'm going to put that on later. I hope I can get it on, otherwise you've got to pull all that shit off. And this thing here isn't easy to get off. I can tell you now, that's a pain in the ass to get it off. So I'm pretty, I can get it on, I'm sure. I've had the, I did roughly assemble the brakes and the handbrake lever so I can see how that spring actually fits. I should have filmed it better. Anyway, I've just got to put this thing... That's what runs the brake cut, the brake line goes on one of these. I can't remember which one it was. I'll go up and have a look on the video. It goes here or there or there. Anyway, I'll put that on later. But when my son gets home, I'll get him to help me spin that around. Like it's, these things are very heavy. They they weigh a lot. I'll spin that around so tomorrow I can assemble the other side. I'll try and video more of it. Then anyway, that's done. That's ready to bolt onto the car. All I've got to do is detail the shocks. 
Flip this around, time to do this side. This side's all done. Turned out really good. I've just got to assemble the brakes, that's all done. So, I'll just get some First stuff. Thing I'm gonna do, this bearing here, I've desealed it. That goes in there, right? That, that there goes in there. So I've cleaned all these surfaces, all that. I'm just gonna press that in there. And that, like it's a tight fit. But I'll heat that up, it should just drop in. There you go, just sit straight on. I'll just give it a little press down. They always put a bit of oil, uh, grease actually, on the bearing surfaces. Don't just put them on dry. Because I heated that up, it just fell in. It fell straight in. But make sure you put the chain on. You can't get it all you can't get that chain off while that's in. The next thing I do is put bearing on this, the correct one on the correct side. On that's the, the right bearing that, that bearing fits into there okay now you've got to make sure you put the right seal on there's two seals they're both 55 I, od but the, the id is different one's 35 one's 37 if you put the 37 on there it won't seal it's got a seal onto this sprocket so i know the 35 goes there plus i've already done this side so you don't want to make that mistake, otherwise when you go to put this in, you'll realise you're on the wrong one, you've got to pull all that crap back off and it doesn't come back off easy. When you pull this apart, that's full of grease, because these are unsealed. I'm going to leave these two bearings sealed. So you don't want oil getting through there. So having the sealed bearings and the seal, it's not coming through, but I've just bunged some grease in there so just to stop it from corrosion or whatever. So I'm just going to heat this surface up. That makes that expand just enough and you can just drop the hopefully just drop the thing in the bearing but it might you might have to give it a bit of a tap but if you heat it up it helps definitely helps <clears throat> you know i've got to put this down drop straight in because i heated it up you put the seal on the seal goes on the, the opposite way you think it would goes because it's got to stop oil going that way not that it can get in there anyway you also got to put a little um o-ring down in there there's also a, there's an o-ring for each side. The sprocket just dropped on a lot easier than the other side. Now I'll just flip that over and load, do the other side. That bearing goes down there, you drive that into that housing. I just had a bit of pipe. This thing, there's an o-ring there. There's an o-ring there, same on each side. So now I'll just put this down here. Actually, what goes on next is the brake plate. This thing here. And you can get that spring on. I didn't think you could, but you can which is good and that goes like that it's also got a gasket I'm just using the old one there's nothing wrong with it and I just put this down all done lastly you put your seal that's the one with the 37 ID because it's got to run on that which I'll give that a, I'll give that a little sand and I'll put some bit of grease on that and then I'll throw that on. Is that all assembled, torqued up? When you tighten that, when you move that, it tightens the chain. And it runs off this little roller thing at the top as well. They're in good condition, there's nothing wrong with them. I thought I was going to make new ones, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. Now I'll just put on the gasket, throw it on. I'll pop this out actually, that doesn't... There's, a, there's an o-ring on there. There's an o-ring on there. They've all been replaced. There's heaps of o-rings. It's all ready to go. I'll just put a little bit of glue, gasket glue to hold that little washer there and I've got a screwdriver holding it in position. I can't film this. I'm, this is all ready to go. I'm just about to throw this together. All these bolts are lined up and this gasket's perfect actually. Both of them they went on quite easy, the whole thing. I'll just run up a couple of these bolts. That one, that has a thing on it. I'll just run the bolts up. We're getting there, it's nearly done. Just like that, it's all done. Just got to do the brakes. These parts here, I'm going to paint. I'll put new screws in there. I haven't done the other one. I've still got to do the front ones as well, but this thing's all done. I'm just about to tip oil in it. And just, you know, I'll spin the wheel and just get it all working through so everything gets oil all over it. But yeah.
I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. I'm just waiting on some rubber so I can do the wheel cylinders and then I'll throw all the brakes together. But that's ready to go into the car. All I've got to do is do the shocks. So I'm going to try and pull them springs apart now. I want to paint them shocks. They still seem to work fine. They'll do for now. In the future, we'll put new shocks on it. I'm not saying well anyway, I'm not. Anyway, I'm just about to put the oil in it. But that's the pretty oil much in done. it is not leaking anywhere. It can leak through here, this shaft can leak anywhere actually, but that's where they leak, is right here. It's not leaking. It's got new O-rings on each side. Nothing's leaking. It's full of oil. I'm really happy with it. I just wanted to throw in that me mate at the chrome platers, the insurance is gonna save him. He's gonna be back up in business in a couple of weeks, so I'll be taking all that stuff over there in a couple of weeks. Anyway, this thing's coming off the bench as you know, not as soon as my son gets home. It's gonna just sit it down here out of the way, but that's ready to grow on the car. What I'm gonna do is aquablast that. I've got all the cylinders, everything, they're in there. I've got pretty much everything I need. But I've got to make a start. See how everything rusts so easy here? That's just been from sitting. And all that's got to be, I'm going to spray some shit on that now actually. Anyway, thanks for watching that.